We could certainly apply the quotient rule to this. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be awful. But I also would like to show you that I'd like to show you this. This is something because we're going to do the second, first, and second derivative of this question. Notice sometimes what we can do, and, and this is a problem where I would do this. Remember, if I have uh, x plus three over two. I could write that as x over 2 plus 3 over 2. All right, I can break that to the same denominator, breaking it out to two separate fractions. We can do that here. I mean, I, this doesn't help us. But for this problem, though, let's see what it does. And remember how I said I don't, I'm not a fan of the quotient rule? So if I can avoid using the quotient rule, I usually try to. And here's the situation where I can. I broke that rational expression up into two rational expressions because they have the same denominator. And now I'm going to simplify it. x to the fourth over x squared becomes 4x squared. And then this one, I can do that 5x to the negative 2 trick. So what does that do for me? Well, now I can just use the power rule. So that's going to become 8x to the first minus 10x to the negative 3. Remember, bring the 2 down in front, multiply by what's there, take away one more. So that's that's the first derivative. Well, while we're on the roll, let's just find the second derivative. Well, the derivative of 8x is 8, and this one will become plus 30x to the negative 4. And there we go. So that was very easy, right, if you broke it up. Now, if you wanted to do this with the quotient rule and you want to watch this video a little more, I'll show you how to do it that way. But you see, that's, that's, that's pretty easy to do. Um, let's see. Okay, so the quotient rule would be the, the, would be the bottom, the denominator, times the derivative of the top, which is what? A 16x to the third. Um plus the numerator, or minus the numerator. See, I almost made that mistake. 4x to the 4th plus 5 times the derivative of the denominator, which is 2x. Whoops, all over, all over the bottom squared, which is x to the 4th. Okay, that works. Certainly have to clean that up a little bit, though. Let's see here. Um, so that's going to become 16x to the fifth, right? 16x to the third times x squared minus 8x to the fifth minus 10x all over x to the fourth. Let's see. So that's going to leave me 8x to the fifth, right? 16x to the fifth minus 8x to the fifth minus 10 10x, I'm just trying to make this be the same as my answer. Oh, all, and this is all over x to the fourth. So I'm just trying to make this be my answer, same, same as my answer that I got earlier using the power rule. So that is 8x to the fifth over x to the fourth minus 10x over x to the fourth. I can cancel that out. That becomes 8, 8x. And I cancel out the x, so 10 over x to the third. Is that what I got before? Yes, it is. It's exactly what I got before. Okay, so I don't know. What do you think? Uh, is this easier or is this easier? And we have to kind of take it down this, this simple because now we've got to take the second derivative. So, you know, it's your call. You can go do it either way you want. I'm not saying my way is the best way or that, or that. it's not my way. It's just a way to do it. Um, I just think, in my mind that this is complicated. I almost made some sign mistakes. This is this other way was pretty easy. So it's your 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 call. You don't have to do what I do.